Hello everyone, my name is Mini Sethi. I hope you all are staying healthy. Today we are going to talk about Calder Hicks compensation criterion. This principle was given by British economist Nicholas Calder and John Hicks. As we know, according to Pareto optimality, we cannot increase the benefit of one person without making loss of any other person. According to Pareto optimality, we cannot increase the benefit of one person without making loss of any other person. But according to Calder and Hicks, if people, those who are benefited through welfare, can compensate to loser and still are in benefit, in such a case, change can be desirable, otherwise not. Please listen carefully. According to Calder and Hicks, if people, those who are benefited through welfare, can compensate to loser and still are in benefit, in such a case, change can be desirable, otherwise not. We will clearly understand with the help of one example. Suppose the government law system has changed now. And according to new law, fishing is prohibited in lake. But swimming and boating are allowed. In such a case, a fisherman is in loss because fishing is prohibited in lake. And people, those who earn money through tourism are in benefit because swimming and boating are still allowed. In such a case, people, those who earn money through tourism can compensate to fishermen or we can say they give few money to fishermen for his loss because of new law. In such a case, change can be desirable otherwise not. So, we consider according to this principle, people, those who are benefit can compensate to loser and still are in benefit. In such a case, change can be desirable, otherwise not. Now, we are going to talk assumptions of this criterion. First assumption is satisfaction of individual is independent of others. That means satisfaction of one individual don't depend on the satisfaction of other individual. Tastes and preferences of individual remain constant. Ordinal measurement of utility. That means we can measure utility by giving ranks. Interpersonal utility comparison is not possible. That means we cannot compare utility of one person with other. There is absence of externality in production and consumption. Sometimes our production and consumption decision affect people which are not related with this process. For example, because of your production, society is bearing so much environment pollution. It will be called a negative externality in production. But this principle assumes there is absence of externality in production and consumption. Now we clearly understand this principle with the help of this diagram. In this diagram on x-axis we have utility of A and y-axis we have utility of B. And uh, our original initial equilibrium point is Q or we can say that before any change in government policy, our original equilibrium point is Q. At this point, you can see utility of A is OA and utility of B is OB. Now, suppose the government policy has changed. Because of a change in government policy, we have moved from Q to T. Now, our new equilibrium point is T. At this point, you can see utility of A has reduced from OA to OA1. But utility of B has increased from uh, OB to OB1. Because of change in government policy, utility of A has reduced from A OA to OA1. But utility of B has increased from OB to OB1. So, we can say that because of a new government policy or we can say because of a change in government policy, B is benefited but A is in loss. So, here B is benefited through government policy because utility of B has increased. But A is a loser because utility of A has reduced. And according to this principle, people, those who are benefited through welfare, can compensate to loser and still are in benefit, then we can say that change is desirable, otherwise not. That's why now B will compensate to A. Suppose B has compensated to A and after uh, compensated to A, our new equilibrium point is R. At this point, you can see B has compensated to A this amount. B1, B2, B1 amount. This uh, amount uh, B has compensated to A. And our new equilibrium point is R. At this equilibrium point R, you can see A has achieved its previous or we can say original utility OA. 
his original utility at this q point was o a similar he has achieved his original utility at this r point that is also equal to o a plus here you can see b is still is in benefit because b utility has increased as compared to his initial or we can say original utility b original utility was o b but at this r point you can see b original utility is o b 2 so here we see b has compensated some amount to a but still is in benefit this is uh, this principle i want to say according to this principle those who are benefited to welfare can compensate some amount to loser and still are in benefit then we can say the change is desirable otherwise don't so according to pareto optimality we cannot increase the benefit of one person without making loss of any other person but according to this principle we can increase benefit of any other person without making the loss of any other person now we are going to talk about criticism of this principle assume marginal utility of money is same for all individual but this is not true marginal utility of money is not same for all individual some people have more value for money because they don't have money on the other hand some people don't give so much value to money because they already have so much money this principle suggest potential compensation rather than actual compensation this principle only talk about possibilities of compensation but don't talk about actual compensation and welfare cannot increase unless compensation is actually paid this principle ignore interpersonal comparison of utility you cannot compensate other individual without doing interpersonal comparison between utility but this principle ignore interpersonal comparison between utility it evaluate gain and loss due to money term means this principle evaluate gain and loss in term of money but ignore real value of loss and gain and this principle ignore externality in production and compensation but in real life externality also affect production and consumption so this is all about calder and hicks compensation criterion i think you got it and thank you so much for watching this video bye take care